People talk about digital transformation as if it's about applying a few technologies to your manufacturing processes and leaving it at that and everything magically uh, will uh, transform itself and hey presto, we enter a bright new future. It is nothing like as simple as that. I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew Leesk, who's business, head of business transformation at Jaguar Land Rover. Andrew, it really is not about the technologies. Well, it is, but it's not just about the technologies. It must be about the people and culture. It is, it is. And certainly the, the, the programs I'm leading with, with an engineering and programs for, for JLR's transformation, we, we have some big challenges around data and some big challenges around the technology for bringing that data together. But, but the key thing is, once we have that, we have those technological foundations in place, then it's all about people. So the information we're producing from those is, is no good if people don't act on it. You know, it's no good if people reject it. So, so for all of that, it's about building the foundation, which the technology can do, and then it's all about people. You and I were talking the other night about uh, the processes and the way that, that companies like Jaguar Land Rover have to, to, to really almost microanalyze what you do so that the best is derived from the potential of the technologies. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because I think a lot of people will be fascinated to learn from it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of the big challenges. So, so I've been a program manager in the past and, and, and so you think, well, it's easy. Yeah, we know you know, we, we have big chunks of data. You know, I can tell you whether stuff's going to be late or on time, but I can tell it to you in, in big blocks, blocks of a week or a month. And what we're really trying to do now is actually, as you say, get that down to the absolute micro level. So on a desk level, on a, a person in a team, you know, we, we should be able to see uh, where that critical path is, you know, who actually owns, who's holding the ball at the moment for, for any delay in the program, or you know, who can we bring forward and make the program early, right at desk level. I'm wondering, a small, smaller company listening to this might be thinking, well, heavens above, it's okay for JLR to be talking in such... You know, it, such muscular terms, because it does take a lot of management muscle to, to achieve this. Um, but I suppose it all starts with a mindset, does it not? And if you, there is advice out there to help people develop this kind of thinking. There, there is, yeah. And, and as you say, mindset is key for this. And we're, we're trying to be, I mean, it's, I've worked in micro businesses, you know, you know, one, two, four people, up to uh, 100 employees and now we're, we're playing with 40,000 um, and, and the, the interesting thing on that is that the cultural challenges are very different for those uh, but for us what we're trying to do is be really subtle about the culture so we're not coming in and saying you know this is a new thing and we're, we're doing all this and it's exciting we're giving people new tools which guide the culture so so people have now got something which very subtly directs them in the direction that, that we're all going to be going I must say it was amusing because when you and I were talking, as I said, there was also somebody there from, from quite a large company where they had literally just gone in and chucked the technology without consulting the people on the shop floor about what it was supposed to do and how they were supposed to interact with it. And 90% of it was just slung out on the basis that <clears throat> it just doesn't work. So consultation with shop floor, getting this mindset, getting this culture right, paramount. A absolutely. Absolutely, and, and can't stress that enough, because yeah, we're no better than other people in that. We, we've had initiatives where we, yeah, we go away and we work in a darkened room for five years and come back and say, here's the solution, and everybody goes, well, that wasn't the problem. And, and so what we're doing really closely here is we are building this from a very user-centered perspective. So the, the, the great thing about that is even our minimum viable products that we're developing for, for people to, to demonstrate the possibilities, people are now saying to us, well, great, can we use it? Is it ready? Is it live? And, and for us, that's a measure of success. People want to take it from us and, and run with it. You know, they're not resistant, which is great. Earlier this year, he said, changing topic in a heartbeat, earlier this year, I was at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and I, I was at the start line um, and I saw an F-Pace, yep. an electric F-Pace, uh, just disappear from the start line it was almost like it was clouded dust absolutely brilliant to see see it happen but of course uh, JLR um, like every motor manufacturer is getting into not just EVs electric vehicles but AVs autonomous vehicles now in, in a company like JLR what is the what's the internal discussion about the challenges um, 
pitfalls and opportunities for uh, turning Jaguars into autonomous vehicles? It's, it's a really good question. Um, so the I-Pace, electric I-Pace, which you saw, is oh, that, it was, wasn't the I-Pace. 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 Um, that's okay. It's, it, that's, one, that's a really interesting one. And, and if you look at the I-Pace and go back uh, three years or five years, yet who in the industry, who within the business, would have seen that, that we would be launching an electric vehicle which we've now got a partnership with Waymo to do as an autonomous vehicle in shared ride hailing services in the States. And, and so the change for the business in that is Sorry, really shared significant. Shared ride hailing? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so we announced like it about, taxi. yeah, we announced it about, um, it must be five months ago now. Um, so we have a partnership deal with Waymo, so Google's uh, autonomous driving uh, organization. And, and we are providing them with uh, iPaces, specially modified uh, to run as autonomous vehicles using their software and our hardware and systems. But the thing about autonomous vehicles surely is that it it should, in my mind, in the mind of a lot of people, end up with us all driving something that looks pretty much the same. And we all know where that goes. We all end up, we know the brands which have a kind of commonality in their design. The iPace is an absolute piece of beautiful work. Why would you want to have an autonomous vehicle that more than likely you're going to be sharing with other people that, ha- that is such a thing of beauty and so expensive? It's a really good question. And as, as you said in our discussions previously, you know, there's, a, there's a whole market for it's a generic pod and it turns up and I don't care. All I want to do is get from my house to work. Uh, what you also then have is a whole separate market, which is uh, the, the more premium market you know, where we sit, where uh, I'd like to get from my house to a nice dinner out. You know, I have somebody to impress who I'm going with. You know, I'd rather not go in a tiny little pod that you know, a thousand people have already been sick in today. You know, I'd, I'd quite like to go in, in something which is well looked after Thank and is a premium vehicle. You know, it's the concern that everybody has. You know, to, you know, anybody who's taken an Uber, that's one of your, you know, your worries. So um, you, know, you move from having a driver in the car to not. You know, who's going to notice? So how does this work? You've got, you've got an iPace. You... you, you it's all, it can be autonomous, <clears throat> pardon me, but why would you have a, an iPace, which is, it must be a wonderful fun to drive, yeah. uh, and then basically have uh, automation drive it for you? So, um, so the, the, the autonomous iPaces that are there at the moment are a very specific use case. So, so Waymo have said, yeah, we want a more premium vehicle. They use Chrysler uh, minivans as their, their main one. Um, so they've come to us and said, you know, you, we together, we, we have this premium electric vehicle that they can use. Uh, moving forward though, as a, as a normal customer, the reason for having autonomy um, and still having an exciting car is because not all driving is exciting. So if, if you think about you know, my drive to work, I can drive country lanes for most of it and then I hit a place where I'm on the motorway or I'm in a traffic jam. And at that point, I don't care about driving. Yeah, that driving is not exciting. Uh, and so for that driving, great. Car can take over. Okay, I'll read the paper or my phone, more likely nowadays. Um, and, and the car will do that last mile, two miles into, into the plant. Um, but for the rest of it, where I want to be exciting, you know, that's where an autonomous Jaguar really makes sense. It's, that's an interesting future. It's your vision of the future. It's not necessarily what's going to happen because we all know, um, you know, the future has a way of taking us by surprise. But that's a really interesting one. Yeah. At the end of the day, I suspect that the challenge is to reduce congestion where possible um, and, and make our roads better and, and, and easier to drive. But what you're saying is that autonomy delivered the way you see it, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you know, if it is a traffic jam you're entering, you don't necessarily have to uh, put up with it. You can just lie back and enjoy yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And, and for us, it's very much, and particularly with the Jaguar brand, it's, it's very much about blending that excitement when you want it and, and at the point where the road is not exciting you know when you commute into London for example uh, you commute into Liverpool here uh, th- there'll be points where you just let the car do all the hard work well thank you very much Andrew good exactly. luck with the future thank you very much good to see you cheers Thanks.